Hello boys and girls, welcome to my channel, I'm the Obscure Angel PD, and for today what we have in here is The Crew 2 Closet Beta. So this game was developed by the Ivory Tower, the same developers behind the first The Crew, and also part of the team of the games like Test Drive Unlimited 1 and Test Drive Unlimited 2. The game is still published by Ubisoft, and they are still using their internal engine, which is a special engine they are using for The Crew, uh, which is the same as the first game, but it had received a lot of improvements. So for the settings, I'm using Borderless, and the resolution is wrong in here. I'm using 960 per 540. You can find this um, this game. I mean, this resolution is not available on the graphical settings of the game. I had to create a custom resolution. That is a video on the description where I teach you to create a custom resolution, and then you need to change your Windows desktop resolution before entering the game to that resolution to that 960 per 540 and then in the game you just need to activate borderless and adjust all the graphical settings to the minimum so i tested the game with 720p minimum settings and the frame rate wasn't really that good it spent most of its time below 25 frames per second in this race but with my custom resolution, if you decide to go with the low settings, which is a far more acceptable setting than the minimum because you still have shadows and lightning, uh, you get an average of 27, but the game it is bound to drop from those 27 frames per second to something lower than 25, which might be a little bit uh, wrong, you know, in a racing game. But if you go with 960 per 540 and put the game entirely on the minimum settings, which includes removing the shadows, which makes the game really dull, you can expect an experience completely above 25 frames per second. So this is the race that I use, that I've used to benchmark the game, it is the, the most demanding um, race from the three races that I've tried in this game, and uh, it is surprising because the game runs really well, it feels really smooth, despite the game it is at 30 frames per second and sometimes lower than that. Uh, the entire feeling that I had uh, while driving this game is that the game feels very smooth for an open world game. It is, it, it, it seems like there is not a, not a single stutter, it feels really smooth, it is strange to be synced, especially from a Ubisoft game. But it seems that the game it is very, very, very well optimized. Yes, we are playing with the minimum settings, it's true. And we don't get any shadows or any stuff like that on the minimum settings. But what I want to say is that overall, I mean, I wasn't really expecting to be able to run this game in this laptop. But here it is, it is running. And at 30 frames per second, it is completely playable. So... I can say that I am surprised, and this is probably one of the most demanding races you are going to find in-game, that is the reflections on the floor, um, that is the sun is casting down all its effects, so everything is wet, and I think this should be the most demanding because I tried another races, uh, I tried multiple races in this video, and um, the other race that I did try in this video it was on the countryside in the middle of the mountains uh, an off-road race with a truck and the frame rate it was so good that i was able to to boost the game graphics to the low instead of minimum having shadows more grass density and a lot of effects like depths of field and the game was running completely above 30 frames per second even with shadows but the third race of this video it was on the water and it was a little bit more dense regarding you know regarding environment you were able to see trees and stuff like that and so i had to reduce again the game from the low settings to the minimum removing shadows and stuff like that in order to sustain a 30 frames per second experience okay so overall what i notice is if you are in the middle of the city or in the more dense area with a lot of trees and stuff like that um, the game will be running under 30 frames per second if you use the low settings okay but uh, if you go to a more countryside area like a desert or anything like it, the minimum settings run exceptionally well around 40 frames per second. If you decided to go with the low settings, having shadows and lightning effects, which is good, the performance is not, all, not always that good. So in the middle of the city or dense areas, you should expect a performance around 
25 frames per second so it's not a thing for every people not all of the people will be able to enjoy a game at 25 frames per second especially a racing game but it's storable that's the thing that i want to say there is no stutters everything seems really smooth okay and despite we are playing in here with a weird resolution below 720p the thing is, this game forces temporal on TV acing. It's not on the options menu, but I was uh, messing around with the configurations of the game. And I discovered that whatever if you use on TV acing on FXAA or off, the game always have enable a TAA solution. So this game, even at the low resolutions, feels really smooth in its image. Okay, the quality seems really smooth. Um, sometimes too much smooth to be honest, sometimes feels a little bit blurry but overall the feeling is that the game feels very smooth, there is no jaggies or anything around in this game even with a very low resolution like this one so I'm really surprised with the performance, I'm really surprised uh, somewhat sometimes with the graphics of the game and its smoothness so yeah I think Ubisoft is finally learning how to build a proper um, PC port. The only downside, and that doesn't really affect this laptop, is that if you want to run the Crew 2, your CPU needs to support SSAE 4.2 and AVX instructions. So our laptop supports all these features, if you have an i5 4200, uh, but for example, if you have a Pentium G, a Pentium G doesn't support AVX instructions and your game isn't going to start, okay? That's essentially what you need to know. If you have an i3, an i5 or an i7 CPU, your game will start, okay? But if you have a Pentium CPU, uh, you, will, you will not be able to run this game, okay? That's essentially what you need to know about uh, what can you expect from, from this game. Uh, if you have uh, an IMD CPU, so if you have, for example, a Phantom 2, you won't be able to run this game. Unfortunately, it is impossible since it lacks SSA 4.2 and AVX. But if you have an FX CPU or a Ryzen, Ryzen CPU, you will be okay running this game because it supports all these features. Okay? So, guys, that's all that I want to talk about the Crew 2. Hope you keep enjoying the rest of the video. And oh, oh, I was almost forgetting. If you want to pre order this game, you should be able to get it from Steam or Uplay for 60 bucks. It's the typical price of a full AAA title. But if you want to get it cheaper, you might be able to get it from Kingwin for around uh, 45 euros or bucks, which should be much more cheaper than on Steam or Uplay. I have the links on the description if, in case you want to buy it from that price, okay? from. 45 bucks or 45 euros and I guess that's it so guys thank you much for watching I hope you keep enjoying the rest of the video and that will see you soon good not bad you and me we got some things to discuss about your future come on base camp and your new car away
Congratulations, you got the gig. Let's go someplace we can talk about what happens next.